yeah, yeah, I know it's not spelled the same, but it's still a mat. You guys won't let me have any fun. <laughs> hey everyone. In today's After Effects basic tutorial, I'm going to cover maths. That's with a double T and an ES at the end. And why they are all sorts of awesome. Now, a mat is an invisible layer that is used to define the opacity of the layer directly below it. You can specify whether the opacity of the bottom layer comes from the brightness, inverse brightness, alpha or inverse alpha of your matte layer. One of the coolest things in Adobe After Effects is that your matte layer can be anything you want. It can be a photo, a shape, a video, even another composition. This unlocks one of the great powers of Adobe After Effects as it allows you to have adjustment layers with animated mats that change with the adjustment layers and therefore all of your effects are being applied to. But enough talking, let's get right into it. I have two layers of footage here and because I have no masks on the top layer, it completely obscures the clip beneath. Let's define which areas of the top layer are transparent by using a mat. For this, create a new text layer by selecting the text tool from the menu bar. Click into the scene and type some text. Make sure the text layer sits directly above the layer that you want to use it as a mat for. Next, go to the track mat column in your layer properties window. If you cannot see this column, you may have to enable it by clicking on the toggle switches slash modes button at the bottom of the window. You can also press F4 on your keyboard. On the layer directly below our text, set the track mat option to alpha. This option specifies that the alpha for this layer will be derived from the alpha of the layer directly above. You can see how the mat is affecting this layer if you move the mat layer around a little. Wherever the text layer was invisible, our layer has now also become invisible. The alpha of the mat is controlling the alpha of the layer. If you change the track mat option to inverse alpha, the layer will become visible wherever our mat layer is invisible. It would basically look like you're cutting out the text from the layer. Luma means to derive the opacity from the brightness of the mat and inverse luma, well, I'm sure you can guess what that one does. The great thing is that you can use any element you want as a mat, whether it's plain text, some shapes, an image or footage, and all of those can be animated to suit your needs. Let's move on to something a little bit more exciting. I have the same scene of Selena from Fables and Fashion here that I used in my After Effects Basics tutorial on adjustment layers. Let's desaturate everything except the rows as we did before, but this time, rather than tediously animating masks, let's do this by combining mats with adjustment layers. First, create a new adjustment layer by going to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Give it a useful name and add a hue saturation effect to it to desaturate the entire scene. Now for the fun part. Duplicate the footage layer, move it above the adjustment layer and call it Matte. What we want to do is to turn this layer into a clip that contains nothing but the red parts of the rows. We can then use this layer as a mat to control the opacity of the adjustment layer and therefore control which parts of the footage will appear desaturated. For now I'm going to hide all layers except for the mat so that it's just a little bit easier to see. Search for the linear color key effect and add it to your mat layer. Since we want to key out the rows based on the color, set the match color option to chroma, which is just a different name for color. Next, use the color picker to select the red of the rows. As you can see, most of the red parts of the image have already disappeared. However, there is some red in Selena's face, lips and fingernails and we have to tweak the matching tolerance and the softness a little bit to clip out the rows as cleanly as we can without clipping out too much of the rest of the image. However, there will be a little bit of cleanup required. Set the view option on the linear color key effect to matte only. The layer will turn into a grayscale image that is dark where the effect matched our red color and white where it did not. Notice that we have a few artifacts in our layer that we will now need to clean up. Unfortunately, After Effects is not very smart when it comes to masking out layers that have certain effects on them that modify the alpha channel, like our linear color key effect. If you try to add a mask around the rows, you will notice that there is now an ugly black rectangle around it. Not a good thing when we want to use the layer as a mat. To properly apply the mask, you will first have to pre-compose the layer. I will talk more about pre-composing in an upcoming tutorial, but for now just know that this will nest the layer and any effects on it inside a new composition. Since that new composition is treated like any normal footage layer, we can then apply masks to it without any problems. However, before we pre-compose the layer, I will apply an invert effect to the mat. Why? 
because we want to use the layer as a luma mat where the brightness controls the opacity of the adjustment layer and thus of the desaturation effect. Anything we cut away with masks will be treated as if it was black and since our rose is already black we'd be in trouble. By applying the invert effect we ensure that our rose is white and everything else including the parts we will cut away with masks will be black. So now pre-compose the layer by selecting it and going to layer pre-compose. Give your layer a useful name, ensure that you enable the move all attributes into the new composition option and hit OK. Now roughly mask out the rows. Yes I know, I'm still using a mask, but this one is really easy to create compared to the tedious nightmare you can see in my tutorial on adjustment layers. Finally, enable all layers again and set the track mat option on the adjustment layer to luma inverted. Now everything that isn't white in your matte layer, which is everything except the rows, will be desaturated. I hope this gives you a small idea of the complex effects that you can create by combining adjustment layers with mats. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and as always please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. Until next time, I will see you later.